Hey guys, I'm Michael Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and we're going to be discussing Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. We're going to first talk about deck building, and then we're going to go into detail with these shard cards, or these shard booster packs. Hopefully with this video, you'll have a good idea of how to construct your deck, as well as what you'd be getting in the specific shards, or the evil booster packs for Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. Let me go and talk about it. So let's begin talking about deck building for Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. The first thing you need to know is that every deck can only have 100 gold value points to it. And to determine what value is, you're going to look at the card, and in the bottom left-hand corner of the card is going to be a brown sack, and that is going to illustrate how many points it's worth. You can have a total of 100 points, some cards are worth zero, others are worth more. The next thing you need to know is that there are two heroes per deck. You can include two heroes, and those are pretty uh, much illustrated. You can determine them by the what they say on the card specifically, as well as the fact that you can have a total of 45 cards in your deck. That does not include tokens, however. There also follows a 10-10-10 rule. As you know, there are three types of cards in Heroes of Karth Deathmatch that are followed in decks, and that is going to be the spells, the treasure, and the barracks deck. You have to have at least 10 of each of those decks, so 10 cards in each of those decks, and a total of 45 cards overall. You can only have three of the same type of card, much like other games that have a certain amount of maybe four or two. This game is three of each card. However, that is not including tokens or terrain cards. You can include uh, factions that are allied to each other, so any allies cards can go with each other. However, factions alone do not mix. You can't mix two, of this, uh, two different types of factions and allies can mix as much as they would like. Neutrals can be added to any deck, as well as mercenaries. They do not count towards either one. And another thing to note is terrain value and how to set that up as well. You get a total of 16 terrain cards you can use. Five of them have to be spawners, and no more than three of them uh, can be movement and pairing. So you can only have three movement and pairing terrain cards or less. Also, you have to check to see on all the cards the value of them, because they all have to be 100, uh, under 100 points together for those 45 cards. And even the tokens can potentially have uh, some value on them as well. So that is the basic idea for deck construction. You'll have three total decks, including a terrain deck, and then a side pile of tokens that could or may or may not include the value of cards. That's the basic idea for how to set up a deck for Heroes of Karth. You can choose to use the Bane starter deck if you'd like, or create your own, and that will work either way as well as mix and matching. Let's go ahead and show you what you'll get in the different starter decks as well as the terrain pack. So now we've come down to the contents of what you'll get depending on what you're going to purchase. We'll go ahead and talk about these individually, and these will come up and discuss individually as well, depending on which video you're watching. All right, so let's go ahead and show a basic deck. This is a starter deck you'd be getting, and it ranges from about $15 to $17 on Game Crafter. It depends on your region, I think. You're going to get in a starter deck, you're going to receive 16 terrain cards and 45 car deck, including any tokens that deck might need. So as you can see here, this deck is going to come with all of these tokens as well. In each of the decks, you're going to be receiving the barracks cards. Quite a lot of them. Let's see how far. And then you're going to get your spell book cards. And then you're going to get your treasury cards here. The base decks are going to be different for each. Uh, each train, uh, train, land cards, whatever, are going to be different for each deck you buy. And these are the ones for this one specifically. And they have their own unique different lands for each deck as well, which is kind of nice. The tokens will also be representative of the deck. And then in the barracks, you're also going to get some heroes as well. So just like any other starter deck, you're going to see some really cool ones. And they have their own unique names on them. This one here, you've got Lian Ehrlich. And this one here is Mediva Tan. And then this is an Elf Lord. So I think it's, here's the two heroes right here per deck. So this is what you're mainly going to be getting for each starter deck. And it's going to come with everything one player needs. However, if you want any of these tokens here or the dice, that's separate. Or if you'd like, you can also choose to take out your tablet or your mobile device. Let's see if I can... Ooh, I'm showing you my password. M for Michael. And then you can go ahead and start using this if you'd like. And you don't need any of the dice or anything. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and discuss a terrain pack. And it'll come in a bag that's either green or purple. And you can go ahead and take this out. And it was it's going to come with eight grasslands. It'll come with five spawners you need for the game. Three mana pools. Three treasures. 
two teleporters, two forests, and two water, which is pretty much everything they have in the game for terrain, and that'll basically give you enough to mix and match whatever you want in your terrain pack. The water is going to be, uh, it's going to uh, halt movement for flying creatures, um, and okay, so flying creatures, undead, and jump, not affected by this. Everything else is affected by water, so that halts movement. The forest is going to stop everything from uh, attacking, line of sight, that kind of stuff when it comes to druids and rangers. The teleporters move you. Whenever people stop on the treasury spots, that's going to gain them uh, treasure. And then you got lesser mana pool, which makes things easier to cast. Spawners, which you probably already know about. And the grassland, which is basic free movement terrain. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what would be in a booster pack now or a shard pack, the uh, shard or an alliance pack. First of all, you get for it's roughly like, I think it's like five to seven dollars and it's 18 cards you're going to get a box you're going to get one hero card or a level five four card you're going to get uh, five tokens gold or mana cards seven commons four uncommons and one rare card in each of these packs which is probably the biggest booster packs i've seen with the most variety which is pretty cool so let's go ahead and go up and discuss the shard cards all right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the shard card booster pack. If you like evil and death and destruction, you'll like the shard cards. What is it? It's 18 cards. Like I said previously, you're going to get a hero, a rare, or a level 4 card, along with uh, some uncommons, some commons, and uh, 5 tokens, golds, or mana cards. Let's go ahead and pop this baby open. You can turn it from the back. You flip it open just like that. Pop, pop. And then you're going to get a reusable pack of cards. You can go ahead and take this out. And then you've got your stack of cards here. These are interchangeable with any of the evil faction, the shard faction. You can, you have to, if they're not allied together, you can't put them together. But if they're the same faction, you can, as well as neutral factions. In here, I've got some crazy stuff like spiderlings and charms. I got a shield of eagles, mages, lesser potions, hunters. Some of these things work with both the, the shard and alliance because you got like gold and that kind of stuff that works together. doesn't matter, as well as the neutrals. And then you've got some, ooh, here's the good stuff right here. I have a hero named Maddie, M-A-D-I. It's a thief, and this is one of the heroes here. And then I've got two goblin chieftains, and these guys are going to be able to give you gold throughout your game. This is These are very useful here. But the whole pack has a variety of different cards, and unlike a lot of games, the commons and uncommons in here are just as useful as the bigger ones are, and it's set to a limit for for the bigger ones so you can't just stuff your deck full of the best cards you have to try and make a custom customizable construction that a customizable uh, you have to customize your deck to make it uh work together right so you can't just throw a bunch of rares in there and call it a day you will actually have to construct your deck the best you can to fight against your opponent and both decks have a seemingly reasonable chance of winning now of course if you kind of construct it poorly by putting a bunch of maybe all the same type of card in there you're not going to do so well however you can only have three of the same type of card in each deck in the uh, shard pack you're going to be getting the evil forces you're going to be getting the goblins and the demons and the ghosts and the things that create skeletons you're going to get the spider which I was talking about in a previous one. Here's the shamans. And then, of course, you know, these are the main ones are the goblins, right? These comes with. But yeah, there's a good plethora of different types of cards that can all be used together in this shard pack. And if you want, you can go ahead and pick up a deck, maybe like this one here, the bomber deck, as well as throwing in a couple packs here, and it'll kind of liven or enhance your starter deck that's already as good. You don't need to add the coins and all that because you can use the app. But overall, if you're interested, I would definitely go ahead and check out the shard card pack. So there you have it, the Shard or Alliance booster pack, depending on which video you're watching. And as you can see, here they are. Now, the question really is, are you good or are you bad? Which side would you choose, Shard or Alliance?